Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Today I'm going to talk about adding a snow deflector to the top of my snow plow. So this plow is obviously a hydraulic angle plow and I have a review of it, but uh, for this one, you know, it's about eight feet uh, wide and then it has no deflector on it. So I want to add a rubber deflector off the top of it to help keep the snow rolling off to the side. And this is really important when you have uh, a big snowfall and the snow wants to uh, pile up and then roll over the uh, the top side of your plow and then obviously you don't get a, a clean um, sweep that way. So what I did is I went online, actually got this off eBay. There's obviously lots of places you can get it uh, if you have a good local place that carries this kind of stuff. This is actually a conveyor belt uh, material that they sell typically as a, kind of like a scrap, but it was 70 bucks to get nine feet of it. And this one is eight feet, or sorry, eight inches wide. Now I don't really need eight inches wide. It probably could get away with six inches, um, but this is what was um, available. And it was, um, I thought a reasonable price. So this is what I got here. So I'll cut that to length. And then, and let me show you that kind of up close here, just so you can get an idea what it looks like. You can see that it has the rubber and then it also has some um, webbing inside there for some um, tensile strength. So this one I think has um, just nylon. I don't think there's any any metal in there. Um, but that, that's what gives it its, uh, its strength. Not that you really need any strength for a snow deflector. You know, it doesn't matter. This one I think it's, um, I think it's a half inch thick. So, um, so then I also bought some just simple bolts. These ones, uh, ones I got were uh, M8 by 35 millimeters long. And that was just to be thick enough to go through the, the rubber and then also grab the, the plow itself. And now these, obviously I got some fender washers uh, for them just to help prevent uh, the rubber from pulling through. That sounds pretty, pretty tough, but um, so I just use the washers. You could, you know, probably the overkill method is to take a, a piece of uh, metal or aluminum and completely sandwich it all the way across. Um, that would be my backup plan, but I don't think this is going to be a problem with just washers. So to cut it, um, I plan to use just a um, you know razor blade. Let me go through. I'll show you how I kind of um, cut it. Use these uh, punches to make the holes, and then attach it. All right. So for the first step, I need to just mark out how much of, I, of it I need. I know I need to basically cut off about um, about a foot of it. So let me just lay it out here on top of the plow and I'll find a good place to mark it and cut it. All right. So for this, it should be pretty easy to cut with just a razor blade here. I'm just going to use this. Obviously, none of this stuff has to be exactly precise. I'm just lining this up with a piece of cardboard as a reference. So I'm just going to go and make a couple cuts here through it, and I'll start to get into the nylon. All right, that's my extra foot or so. So now obviously the next thing I have to do is make sure I cut it the right length. Okay, so I have it so that it's set up here where I think it looks about right. And again, I have about an inch of it hanging off the back side, so about five and a half inches of it is sticking out in front of the actual uh, plow uh, blade itself. So now I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to mark all my holes. I think I have 10 holes in here to mark where I want to get all the uh, the holes punched and then I can uh, secure it. All right, so now I got them all marked. I'm 
Okay, so you can see, just got my little circles there. So I'll get them set up so I can kind of punch them one at a time, I guess. All right. I tried the gasket punch and it just doesn't work for something this thick. Um, I was afraid of that, but um, you know, I, I do know that typically these do work really well, especially if the stuff's thin and then also the that nylon webbing in there is really what kind of holds the stuff up. It, it's uh, struggling to cut through it. So I tried that on my extra test piece first. And basically um, for this, I'm gonna use a drill. It makes, you know, it's not as clean of a cut. And then the other problem is that you know, it doesn't really cut the whole hole, so um, the hole kind of closes in on you as you take the drill bit back out. So, um, but luckily the stuff is stiff enough that it does um, hold enough that I can drill through it, and I can use a, um, a bolt. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drill through it. Make sure the bolt can actually fit through there. I make it kind of tight so I have to like press it in there. All right. got a bolt the fender washer then going through then a fender washer and then the nut you know the nut is a um, they call it like a stover nut which is it's kind of crimped at the very um, the top of it and that just is gives you a little bit of a locking feature so here you can see I have my hole and lined up here so put this through and then I have to really work the uh, the rubber certainly not easy to press it through this hole so I mean I, I could have drilled it bigger but I opted not to so I get to struggle a little bit. <laughs> bit of a struggle but I'd rather it be tight than too loose because then it'll be more likely to tear so put that on there so I'm just gonna get them all thrown in here I have three now and uh, I'll get the rest put in and then that way it should be uh, nicely secured So as you can see, I got all of the holes in there and they actually all lined up. I didn't do any, uh, any tricky ettering where I had to re, uh, re drill a hole. So it all lines up pretty well. And obviously you want to make them correct together. That way you don't have a wrinkle in here. So um, now I just go through and I tighten each one up. So if you, uh, if you like this video, you know, feel free to like and subscribe and then check out my other videos on the channel where I have um, this snow plow in action. I have the tool cat in action, more information about the tool cat as well. So, uh, and I'll keep adding some more to this, uh, to this channel. So hope you like it.
that's it. It was a uh, it was actually a pretty quick project. Um, you know, the longest part was actually probably just uh, getting the holes drilled in there. But um, now we'll see how this works. Hopefully, I get a snowfall here in Michigan. We haven't had a lot of snow yet this season. We had a couple of little two or three inch snows, but I'm hoping for a big one, and then I'll be able to show you guys this deflector in action. Just to give you an idea of you know how it's placed here, I'll show you. So you can see here, it's right at five and a half inches sticking out. You know, on the back, you know, like I said, the whole thing is eight inches wide. So um, you know, I have the bolts facing about an inch and a half, a little bit more from the uh, from the edge. But then that just goes and sticks out. And so what happens is the snow comes, it hits, and then it's going to roll. Um, and hopefully if I keep rolling, it's going to, I'll be able to eject it off the driveway and not have it start to pile up on top of here. Because with the angled and it rolling, you'll all point it towards the, uh, the side of the, the road.